11 11 2021 the year of our lord i reviewed the most expensive knife in this channel's history and pricing aside it was and has remained the closest thing to a knife custom made just for me just how i would want it excellent ergo's beautiful hollow grind on a wank worthy warncliffe fidget factor in action that trumped almost everything else in my knife box and on top of it all it made some incredible noises and in that review i had mentioned that it would eventually become a production knife priced for the masses well ladies and gentlemen eventually has become now because this is the jason grant gripper production prototype it's finally here in all of its full titanium fidgety frame lock glory and by the time you see this video chances are i've had to reluctantly send it along to the next youtube channel for review and i am most likely also in the depths of a soul crushing depression curled up in a ball in the corner crying out for the gripper to return and if you think that I'm overreacting and that this is just a knife, uh, let me explain to you why you were wrong. The aptly named gripper here is the first ever designed by a man who for the past 30 or so odd years has spent his days as a tattoo artist and his nights as a top tier knife enthusiast. And on the weekends did some, or well, a lot of IDPA competition shooting. If you don't know what that is, Google it. And what Jason has created here, visually speaking, I think can be best described as the somehow beautiful love child of a three-way relationship. Yeah, just to hear me out. Looks-wise, if you take the blade off of the Yojimbo 2, the handle of a Strider, and the action and fidget factor of a Nimble, you will get this. And I am in love with it. The scales, the backspacer, and the pocket clip are all titanium, and on this variant, all coated this deep, rich, matte black color. And I mean deep, dark black. I actually have struggled to film the B-roll for this video because this knife just seems to soak up every single ray of light I point towards it. It doesn't matter. I could set it on the surface of the sun, and you would just have a knife-shaped black hole on the sun. Anyway, like the custom gripper I reviewed, it is very apparent that you will have no issues with traction in the hand on this piece. There is frag pattern everywhere on this thing. Both sides of the handles are fragged out, less the faux bolster that adds a touch of class to an overtly tactical looking design. All along the backspacer that runs a good 75% of the length of the handles, we have the same intensely grippy frag pattern. And all along the length of the blade spine, yep, you guessed it, a fragalicious jimping, and it runs the entire length of the blade spine, like literally all of it is jimped. And it is all really well done, and I think it looks absolutely amazing. By the way, this is only the second ever frag pattern production knife I've ever handled. Well, third technically, I guess, but it's besides the point. Closed up, this full-size tactical beast of a knife looks as clean and crispy as it does kind of scary. Just an endless sea of matte black fragged out titanium with a hint of that M390 warning sticking up out of the scales along with the fuller and those deployment slots. It's just a satisfying shape in profile to me and I'm struggling to explain it. it the pocket clip on the prototype here has been my only real complaint but it is being redesigned and tweaked and fixed for the final models that will be delivered to all of you. And even as it is, its slim design and minimal aesthetic pairs really well with the rest of the knife. Opening this thing up, and we are met with this absolutely stunning 3.5 inch Warncliffe blade, and I mean a true Warncliffe. A warny whore's Warncliffe. A Warncliffe made for me, not a hint of belly, anywhere in sight. And I am just... I'm, I'm just all about it. A, a subtle hollow grind, that big gnarly fuller that runs the full length of the blade, those nicely done deployment slots, all of that aggressive squared off jimping along the spine, and that full size finger choil. The profile is just a majestic sight, tip to tail, and I haven't stopped staring at it and snapping pictures of it from every possible angle since the moment it arrived. Overall, it's a tactical and aggressive design, yes, but it manages to offset that scariness with a certain level of minimalist cleanliness and class. A little pomp. It's got, it, it's, it's wearing airs, I suppose. And at the end of the day, I just adore the way it looks. Moving on to the ergos, and if the previous section about the looks didn't quite make it clear enough to you, this thing is the undisputed grippiness king. I mean, I can't even think of another knife that even comes close to feeling like this 
in my hand. And even though this piece is absolutely covered with this intense looking frag pattern, it is relatively gentle in the hands and against your supple skin. Even though it may look like a cheese grater, let me assure you, it's a gentle giant. If the pocket clip is so slim and sits so low that you don't even know it's there, no matter how hard you squeeze, and in literally every hand position imaginable, your finger or thumb ends up landing, j just gently resting on some jimping. No matter where, no matter how you hold it, there's no way to avoid it. Choked back feels really great, although you are a good long ways away from the cutting edge, but thanks to that full-size finger choil, we can snuggle up right behind the edge for some detailed work, a little extra control, and because of the overall size of this piece, the size of your hands, it doesn't matter at all. My smaller hands nestle in perfectly fine with plenty of room to spare, so I'm sure anyone with big old bear claws will enjoy it just as much as I do. At the end of the day, it is a big heavy knife, but it is one that I absolutely love to hold and I have loved to use the past couple of weeks. And speaking of things that I've loved to use, let's talk about that blade. That beautiful, aggressive, and angry looking three and a half inch long Warncliffe is done up in M390 and it is sporting this ever so subtle hollow grind that comes about 60% of the way up the height of the blade. But let me tell you, 60% is most definitely enough. The final cutting edge on this thing is is magical. It is insanely slicey, tipped to choil, a junk mail, cardboard, small children, none of it stands a chance against this thing. And in all of my testing, I can happily report that the fuller and the deployment slots never once get in the way of whatever you're cutting. Best Tech did an amazing job on this one, even though we all know that Best Tech isn't really a manufacturer, they're like a middleman, but let's not get into that. It's addicting, honestly. I wish I was slicing stuff with it now instead of writing this. A amazing for EDC use and basic daily tasks, and I'm sure, but I cannot confirm equally amazing in any kind of self-defense situation you may find yourself in. And I mean, come on. At the end of the day, it's a textbook warning. I, well, well, what's not to love? Like, I need I say more? And finally, the action. Good God, give me strength to not break down in tears and crawl back into my depression corner. The action is incredible. The only concern I had with the larger model here after handling the custom-made smaller version was could Best Tech really dial in the detent for all of the different modes of actuation? And the short answer is holy shit. Yeah, yes. Yes, they absolutely freaking can. First off, that big hefty slab of M390 is running on bearings and some damn smooth ones. We of course have those deployment slots nestled into that fuller, making thumb flicks and reverse flicks an absolute joy and just completely mindless. The slots are perfectly placed to violently eject that blade from the handles, and the fuller lets you literally put your finger or thumb anywhere you want along the blade length to flick it open. Anywhere. Try it. Get one, try it. Literally anywhere. Completely mindless and totally idiot-proof. Trust me, I would know. And the detent is dialed the F in. So both are insanely snappy and satisfying. And then we have that sculpted and nicely jimped back flipper that sits flush with the back of the handle. And once again, detent is nothing short of cash money. I've had a hard time failing this one. And on top of it all, we have this heavily jimped front flipper tab on the front of the blade spine that no surprises here is dialed the FN insanely well. It is absolutely snap. Oh, chef's kiss. And I have noticed of all of the actuation methods available here, the front flipper action seems to make the best noise, which if you remember, the noise was the most mind blowing part of the custom I handled last year. So it turns out Best Tech not only nailed the action on the production version, they've also managed to pull off the amazing acoustics of the original. And for that, they deserve a, a round of applause, a golf clap at the very least. Incredible action, no matter how you want to flick it or flip it. So where does all of this leave me with the full-size Jason Grant Gripper production model made by Best Tech Knives? Kind of technically made by Des Best Tech Knives. In fact, made by some non-name brand machine shop somewhere in China. Well, I mean, come on. Like, like, come on now. Do I really have to spell it out for you? It's nearly perfect. Let, let, let's get the price out of the way for the first pre-order run which is going on right now as I write this, but by the time this is posted, it may be over. I don't know. I'll, I'll link it if it's still available. I'll link it either way. Or, you know, maybe not. So, the point is, the first pre-order, the price for this behemoth is $320. And considering how much knife we are getting, I, I am totally fine with that price point. A metric 
ton of titanium, all of it fragged to the gills, which means a ton of machine time. A massive and beautiful slab of Warncliffe shaped M390 out of the business end, all high-end materials, all of it insanely well finished. And speaking of fit and finish, this thing is built like a brick house. It is absolutely solid as a rock in every single way. Not a single piece of this knife wiggles or jiggles or rattles. It is quite literally an immovable object, and I would happily tell you it is made, I think it is the most solid and well-built knife I've ever handled from Best Tech full stop. Cutting performance is out of this world. The ergos are insane just on shape and sculpting alone, but we also get all of that signature gripper grippiness from the frack pattern. Oh, and did I mention the action will blow your tits clean off? It is an amazing freshman effort from a tattoo artist out of California that decided to draw a knife on a napkin one day while on vacation in Hawaii. I have to keep reminding myself of the humble beginnings because this thing is better than 99% of all of the big established brands pieces by a good long way. It is truly masterfully done in every single way. I, I love it. I love pretty much everything about it. And if you're anything like me, I can assure you that you will too. <sighs> So anyway, until next time, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye now.